Hi, I'm Brett Middleton and I'm with John from VSport and today we're going to talk about brake fluids and in the next five minutes from a technical point of view we're going to give you some really good valuable information not from a promotional point of view but from a benefit point of view about how you can choose the right brake fluid for your particular application you know what you should and shouldn't do why you can mix some products and not others so I think the most important thing we should speak about first is the brake fluid is the hydraulic fluid that is resulting when you put your foot on the brake pedal that squashes the yep. pads against the rotor. But why do people need to change their brake fluid, John? I mean, it's a pretty um, obvious question to some people, but some other people might not know. For a start, brake fluid is hydroscopic. Uh, for some people, that means it absorbs, obs, absorbs moisture. Um, so over time, basically the boiling point of the fluid and the heat cap capability that it can have lowers and lowers and lowers each time. So on a road car, um, you can get away with a normal fluid because the temperatures aren't exceeded but it should be flushed every 12 months. When you start getting a high performance car, obviously more speed, uh, braking later and especially in a track day car you need to look at a performance fluid. So I think what we should start at, from our point of view at MRT, we recommend obviously your, the AP Racing, you know, the 600 fluid. How does that compare to a normal run of the mill brake fluid? Um, compared to normal run-of-the-mill brake fluid, it has a much higher dry boiling point. What dry boiling point is, mate? It means straight out of the bottle, um, it has a boiling point of 300 degrees. Um, brake fluids also have a wet boiling point, which means over time after it's been used, so it's absorbed moisture, it has a wet boiling, it has a, what they call a wet drawing boiling point. Um, so that both of those um, properties are higher than what you'll see in a standard fluid. Um, you can start with something like this one, um, that has a boiling point of 220 degrees. Um, hot, uh, sorry wet and had a 260 degree dry boiling point. Um, so that would be suitable for a guy that does you know, a bit of spirited driving and light track work and so forth. Um, next up you can step to this one yep. which has the dry boiling point of 300 degrees um, and then you go up in your fluids like the Brembo has 319, another AP one has uh, 320 and then the um, endless one is actually higher again from there. It's only a little bit higher but it is higher. Um, and we're talking incremental changes. I mean, obviously, as we go up, they're getting better, but yep. we're not talking huge. Not like, this is not twice as good in its boiling point as this. Not or twice as good, but in a brake temperature, you're not seeing twice as much temperature. Ideally, you want to keep your calipers around 200 degrees. Anything over that, you've really got problems. Um, so you're trying to keep it around there, but 10 degrees can make quite a difference to the pedal feel. The other thing that they talk about in brake feel is compressibility. Mm. Different. Fluids have comp different compressibility, so it can actually improve the pedal feel by changing the fluid. Because um, people talk about having a woody brake pedal, yep. or the, the dull, yep. and obviously some people say, oh, I've got a long brake pedal, yep. which can be a combination of the condition of the fluid, yep. but also the, quality, the type of fluid, is that yep, right? Absolutely, and the other thing too is some fluids are different viscosity as well, which just means that the thickness of the fluid, I guess is a word, so they can take different techniques to bleed them, some with low viscosity, can be quite difficult to bleed sometimes. Um, for guys doing track work quite a bit in a fast car, you really want to look at something as a minimum like that. Mm -hmm. um, and definitely after each track away, bleed the brakes. Um, and not only doing that, crack the bleed nipples off, push the piston the right back to get all the old fluid out, and then flush it through. Um, after every track day? After every track day. All I mean is say, depending on the car, depending on the track and how hard and brakes it is, you could even do it after each session, just a matter of crack the nipples off and push the pads back one application and close the nipples. But I think most of the people obviously we're talking to are not yeah. going to do that. No, but, but you know, that's what even, even getting Even getting, getting people to do it after every track day sometimes yeah. a bit of a stretch. <laughs> that can be a stretch, <laughs> but it just, it ruins a track day to come out and the brake pedal go on the floor and doing all that. Yeah, you things. spend hundreds of dollars yeah. coming to a track day and you know, maybe $95 to bleed. To, to, to have a really good day and not have any problems. So, yeah. But you know, after every track day you only need half a bottle probably just to do that, just to flush out what's in the caliper. So how would someone then decide whether they really need to go up in the range? I mean, what are we talking about as far as benefit? Look, in benefit, I guess there's all of these aren't synthetic based. So there's no, there's, there are fluids out there that are synthetic based, which only you can use synthetic based fluid with it. Brembo will actually mix with a synthetic based fluid, um, but the rest of them won't. So you have to be careful there with mixing fluids. But as far as going up in range, generally nine times out of 10, this will suit your mark. Mm -hmm. um, on a car that's, like I say, Wakefield Park where we are today, it's not very hard on brakes. If you go to somewhere like Queensland Raceway, which is very hard on brakes, you might find that that slightly extra temperature ability of these three will just keep the pedal firmer. And also, the other things are playing what type of tyres you're running, uh, what sort of brake pads, because the 
different brake pads can put more temperature into the calipers. Yes. Which increases the temperature. Which is as well. a whole other technical yep. video. Uh, <laughs> driving style and tyres, you know, slicks, road tyres, semi slicks. Okay, so can all these fluids be mixed together if someone really has to? If someone really has to, yes, all of these can be mixed together. Um, ideally, though, it would be the last resort that you'd want to do. Okay. You touched on one of them having some silicon content in it. Uh, has no, this one doesn't have. Um, Silicon base, but uh, or synthetic base, but basically it can mix with a silicon base okay. fluid. So let's just quickly talk about silicon brake fluids. Yep. There is a lot of misinformation out there. To put silicon brake fluid in a car, from my knowledge, yep. you have to completely flush the system, yep. new seals, absolutely dry system stuff from scratch yep. because you can't have any residual leftovers of That's any correct. of the old braking fluid yep. in the system at all. Otherwise, you basically wasted your money on the silicon fluid. That's floor. correct, yep. So, like I say, that's the only fluid that we'll, we'll mix with that, um, whereas the others won't. So, yeah, you basically do have to flush the system and just start from scratch with it. So, so as a brake specialist, how many people out there use silicon brake fluid? Um, the only real brand in a motorsport orientated thing that I know that's silicon based is Castrol SRF. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's, it's quite a good fluid. Um, its main benefit is that it has a very high wet boiling point compared to other fluids. So from a long term point of view? Yeah, for someone that wants to live in for a long time, but it sort of, it loses that benefit in a motorsport environment because you should be flushing it, so mm. you're sort of outweighing the cost of being able to leave it in there when you're flushing it all the time anyway, or should be at least. Fair enough. So, any other technical tricks or things that you, you can say on video that maybe some people might not want you yeah, to Yeah, look, just, I guess brakes can be taken for granted and they are a vital part of the car and they should be looked after, so um, definitely just, it doesn't take much just to give them a little bleed after each track day. Okay, so um, for more information, obviously you can go to our website, mrtperformance.com.au and also, I've forgotten the vSport website, what is v -sport, it? www.vsport.com.au Okay, so, and I'm Brett Middleton, this is John, thanks for watching, for more information, keep, keep your eye on these videos, and um, it's our aim to constantly update the websites to give good value for you, and um, speak to you together soon, thanks for watching.